Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the market update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money no matter what, subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. This, this program is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. All right, let's see who's on the stream. Let's say hello. Okay. Tyson, oil is killing it. It is. Taz, happy Monday. First on the stream. We have our friends from the Caribbean. Cyprus, Flipped Burger. Good afternoon. Friends from Greece and Kentucky. All right. Couple, couple, couple clients happy here with the work. That's good. <laughs> Pedro says, give it to me straight, Bill. We gonna make it. All right. Well, let's look into the Elliott wave count and let's talk about that. Okay. Hi, Bill from London. All right. Somebody hoping I had a good weekend. I did. I studied crypto. <laughs> We've got London, New Zealand. We've got Dubai in the house, right? India up late at night. We appreciate that very much, right? Jay and Boomer Sooner from Oklahoma. All right, everybody. Hope your weekend was good, right? Samuel says BTC just dipped a bit. That's true. We're going to go over the DeMarc work. So I've got a hybrid for you. I've got the legacy stuff, and then I have the PowerPoint. All right. Frios wants to know what the best trade is right now. Gimple says short everything, right? And then we have Miami, Ireland, and Turkey in the house. So what is the best trade to do now? Is it short everything? All right, I'll give you the short answer. I actually think it's long Bitcoin, short S&P. That's what I think. All right, so let's dive in to the market update. So I can get everybody up to speed on what's up, right? So let's go to reading view and we're going to look at Elliott wave count today. We're going to look at a bold Bitcoin Elliott wave count, right? We're going to get a possible upside target, a possible downside target, and then how to trade it if we're wrong. Then we're going to go to live DeMarc work, right? To see, you know, how things are trading on a short term basis, because undoubtedly things are going to move on the stream, right? So before we do that, I wanted to say hi to Paco from Lima, Peru. All right, let's jump into it. Folks, you get 10% off our AI-based platform, right, for Women's History Month. WIC10 will give you a 10% discount for, you know, for your lifetime as long as you don't cancel. All right, and then I think existing customers got a bigger discount offer. Let's begin with stocks, okay? Stocks. Oh, all right. Let's be simple. Let's keep it simple. There's all kinds of problems. There's oil mooning. There's the ruble collapsing. There's wheat mooning. What are portfolio managers in legacy supposed to do, right? Like, how do they protect themselves? Well, let's say the Russians decide not to pay their debt obligations, or let's say they decide to pay their dollar uh, obligations or their interest that's supposed to be paid in dollars. Suppose they say F you and pay in rubles. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to European banks? Well, it's going to be a mess, right? We know that. And what do portfolio managers do when you have a mess? They call it contagion where one person defaults on another or one hedge fund strategy blows up, et cetera. 
Well, everyone sells S and P. It gets to a point where everyone just goes, you know what? I don't know what to do. I'm losing money. I have to hedge. Let's go to the most liquid market in the world and just sell S and P. So this is S and P futures ES one. I'm showing that the move below 43.29 targets something in the neighborhood of 4,000. Right. In other words, they just have to kind of blow equities out. Okay, VIX an ind an indication of fear in the stock market. So if VIX consistently stays above 33, it can move to 53, which is a nice way of saying the legacy world is this close from, I think, total panic, right? You cannot have oil and currencies moving the way they are and just have everything be hunky-dory. It's not going to work, okay? This is the dollar versus the ruble chart. I had to break out the altcoin mooning Fibonacci work for this. You know, I have resistance at 184 and 285. So this means the ruble is in the process of essentially a total collapse. Okay, Brent crude oil for delivery in London, right, is, is at 122, which is a key pivot. So there was this big emotional rally overnight on this idea that the world may stop buying oil from the Russians. Then oil retraced back to 122. Now, if that holds, right, oil could turn around and go to 160. Okay. In other words, I don't see what stops this trade with the oil and the ruble. Okay. The dollar index, another measure of fear in legacy, right? In other words, as European banks may not get paid because they have loans to the Russians, right? The Russians may not be able to or be willing to pay their debt obligations. That causes the euro to go down, which causes DXY to go higher, right? DXY probably has another 3% to go to the upside, which is a lot for the dollar, right? So it's amazing that Bitcoin is actually, I don't know, at least holding sort of with the dollar up. Now, if the dollar goes up, they could really flush Bitcoin out. That's why we're going to check the DeMarc works. So stay tuned for that. Now, as an aside, Bitcoin in rubles is about to make a new high. So Bitcoin in rubles is basically back at the high. This speaks to Siri. I'm mean, obviously the, the ruble is effed, right? But this also speaks to very strong demand for Bitcoin. Now, in the short term, I'm just wondering with all these payment systems like Visa and MasterCard came out and said, you know, they did sort of like this self-sanctioning program where, you know, Russian holders of Visa and MasterCard got hurt, right? I'm wondering if American Express is next. In other words, one of the things you have to do with the geopolitical situation is assume that every three days, you know, side A and side B are going to be on the tape, right? Pumping bad news or threats. So in the meantime, you know, this idea of, you know, Bitcoin demand coming out of Russia, coming out of everywhere could start to surface. Remember, everybody bought Bitcoin and took it up to 47 because everybody thought that everyone was going to need Bitcoin. And then it dropped because, well, that buying didn't materialize. And now with the Visa and MasterCard news, that actually may materialize. Now let's talk about stable coins, right? Tether volatility spikes to yearly highs, right? According to Keiko blog, that's on the bottom. Then on the top, there was a story from back in December about how Tether holds commercial paper and money market funds. Now, why does that matter? Well, what happens if there's a bank blow up? What happens if some bank is unable, unable to make its short-term debt obligations? This is what happened in 2008. Like that's the definition of contagion, right? You know, bank A doesn't pay bank B. And then that just kind of, you know, spreads out through the whole legacy system, right? Tether is volatile because... 
We don't even know what assets Tether has. Do they have Russian banks, European bank debt? I don't know, but I'm not really interested in holding Tether, not investment advice. Honestly, you'd be better off in Bitcoin. Now, to underscore the point about Tether, it's actually hard to draw it. This is a chart of EXV1, something that definitely belongs on your trading view watch list. It is the chart of European banks, right? The worse European banks do, the worse S&P does, okay? I guess that's a drag on Bitcoin. It's definitely a drag on highly speculative altcoins. So there's going to be a 20% puke in European banks. Now let's talk about stable coins coming back to crypto. My understanding is that Luna's stable coin, UST, is backed by activity on the network and is also supported by Bitcoin, not commercial paper. So I'm wondering if there's a problem with Tether or if regulators get a burr up their ass, right, about stable coins in general because they're trying to regulate how dollars can move around. I'm wondering if like Luna is a winner take all. So yes, I missed the short at 92. But I think one of the reasons why I passed on the short is because Luna could be one, it could be like a one coin market. I mean, what if the only way to participate in stable coins is if you have one that's based on a network effect and also Bitcoin. So I'm wondering if they smack crypto up today, whether or not, you know, Luna it, it is a buy it, it, around 80 or just below it. Okay. Now let's talk about Bitcoin. We're going to go to the DeMarc work in a second, but I'm guessing that if Bitcoin can recover above 40K, it can go to actually 49. Now that's an if, I get it. All right. But that's one theory I have. And in ETH, it's, it's a little bit more realistic. If ETH can get back above 2578, it can go to 3250. Now, obviously, if it can't get through these levels, then we're all subject to whatever goes on in stocks. Okay, here's the bold Elliott wave count. So I read a book over the weekend called Trading Chaos. It's actually two titles, right? I read, I got the older one that has information about Elliott wave. And what may be in progress now in the center of the screen in the blue lines is this choppy ABC phase. That could lead to a move to like 47 or 48 in Bitcoin, right? Before Bitcoin turns around and does what we call the sea leg. So it went all the way down from the all-time highs. That was A. And now we've been getting chopped into bits. That's B. And then there's going to be a C drop later. It's logical. Some people might say it's logical for that decline to start right now. I guess if you look at equities about to shit to bed, that makes sense, right? I actually think the, the narrative to own Bitcoin to get out of stable coins and to get some holdings in crypto or a crypto backed debit card, I think the argument for that is stronger than it's ever been. So if you could find a technical support point to lean on, like 2,500 in ETH, then you have to ask yourself, hey, is now a good time? Now, big picture, the, the bold Elliott wave count part two is that the downside target for Bitcoin, I think is either 28K or 20. Okay. Is that going to happen today? Uh, I don't know. That's probably something that happens later in the year. But 28K is probably a buy first time down, right? And 20 may be the end destination. Okay. I know a lot of people, like when it's up, everyone thinks it's going to 100K. When it's down, everyone thinks it's going to 10. I think these levels are the ones that you need to focus on. And the DCA probably starts below 30. Okay, Bitcoin dominance. What can happen with altcoins? I get this sick feeling that if there's like a safe haven trade for Bitcoin, that Bitcoin dominance can go up. Because Bitcoin dominance may have bottomed and is forming a bullish downward sloping wedge. In other words, Bitcoin dominance has sort of been held down. And I'm wondering if there's a problem with stable coins whether or not Bitcoin can actually outperform. Now, I don't know if that means go up or go down less than everything else, 
We will see. But that is the bold Elliott prediction. Now, Ethereum, okay, on an eight-hour chart, I didn't label the resistance, but 2705 is a resistance level, right? And that is the PowerPoint version of the market update. That's all your legacy, and that's your bold wave count for Bitcoin. In summary, possible move back to 47 and then a move to 28. All right. So let's see what we got here. M Crypto M, normally each BTC cycle is down 85%. That means 10K, but let's wait and see. Um, plus, if UST loses its peg, that only works in your advantage from Gimple. Um, Gimple actually says I'd be using USDC to borrow UST and then take advantage of the nice return on that. Interesting idea, not investment advice. Uh, Taz is thinking Phantom has hit a bottom. We'll look into that. All right. Somebody's asking me about PAX. Uh, all right. All right. Let's take a look at FTM. We'll make sure we get that in there. All right. Let's go to the DeMarc work right this second. Let's see what we got. DeMarc is some of the best television ever. We're actually talking about doing it on weekends. All right. So here we are. This is Bitcoin. Let's start with the 90 minute chart of Bitcoin. So the 13 bottom showed up. That was late last night. Saw that. Okay. That gave you the rally from 37 up to 40. Now Bitcoin hit resistance. So in my mind on this chart, you know, you've got support at 37,948, right? And I guess if, if it just goes to hell in a hand basket, it's going to 36.6. Okay. Right now, not looking so great on the short-term chart. Now let's look at Bitcoin on the four hour chart. Okay. So there was a 13 bottom on the intraday chart. And there's also a 13 bottom on the four hour chart, which I personally think is really interesting. So there's a 13 bottom in two different places. All right. Bitcoin, at least let's just check it out. Let's just make sure I'm not saying something that's not true. So Bitcoin is actually holding considering what's going on in stock. So it's kind of unchanged, right? Which is pretty good. Now it'd be pretty funny if Bitcoin turned around and went back to 45, because if you look over here, I don't know if you can see it, but I mean, these 13 tops in this range bound environment have worked pretty good in Bitcoin. Okay. Now, sometimes you can get hosed like here. You got hosed because they dropped it, you know, 5% before they took it back up. Okay. But to me, this looks like a Bitcoin bottom. This is like, if I was going to do this, I'd be like, all right, uh, I, I'll buy a dip and then I'll put the stop below 37,900 or put the stop below the low from the other night, which is 37,500, right? This is like, you know, Bitcoin, you got to sell resistance at 44. Everybody is FOMOing and then now it's down and everyone's given up on it. When I think the narrative after Visa and MasterCard is better. I mean... I know somebody who knows somebody who lives in Russia who is out on vacation, right? His cards no longer work. So if you have a card issued in Russia, it will work in Russia. If you have a card issued in Russia, it will not work outside of Russia and vice versa, right? If you have, you know, a Visa and MasterCard somehow connected to a Russian bank or ruble account and you fly to Russia, it won't work there. If you're a non-Russian citizen, I mean, this is like nuclear and I would imagine there's pressure on American express next. So, but this is just me, but how can you not, this is everybody, right? If something happens to your bank for whatever reason, right? Or something happens where you have trouble accessing your bank account for whatever reason. Okay. You got to have a debit card backed by crypto. This is not a crypto.com commercial, but I definitely, I was like, oh my God, 
if Visa and if American Express is next, demand for crypto, I think, goes through the ceiling because I think everybody's got to have crypto at that point. Okay, let's look at uh, also of note on the Bitcoin four hour chart. There's this demarker indicator down at the bottom. Okay, now this demarker indicator has been a historic way to sort of help find when volatility is going to start. So this shaded area, it's like a smart stochastic. Okay, it measures market momentum. So I'm really interested in the fact that, you know, down here, it's giving you a possible, hey, watch out for volatility. Because, I mean, what happens if there's a problem with Tether? I mean, I can think of like three reasons other than the support points that are down here to think about buying Bitcoin after they get done wrecking equities. Let's look at the Ethereum daily chart. Okay, there's a four down here. So that's, that's not terribly exciting. Okay, and then there's support at 2357. So I'm not sure if there's anything to do here right now in Ethereum per se, at least if you look at the daily chart, all right? But again, if you look at the, the four hour chart, okay? It's like, you know, give a brother a chance. If Ethereum is above this dotted line here, right at 2,600, and you've got this demarker signal down here with this 13 bottom, I don't see any reason why ETH can't go back up to 3,000, right? I mean, if you, if you got long, you would probably have to put the stop below this dotted line at 2453. So this is not investment advice, right? And it may puke out if equities blow up. But if that happens, the crypto narrative, I mean, is back. Now, is the crypto narrative going to hold if risk assets melt down? Uh, no, okay? But there are stages of things, right? And now in the initial stage, like what we're at right now, there's a case for crypto. Okay, let's go to the next round. Let's take a look at the layer ones. Let me just check the comments. Okay, some people are saying, you know, you wouldn't be surprised uh, if governments came after crypto. That is also possible, right? Sydney, Australia, giving me some love. I appreciate that. Somebody says, oh my God, sell everything. Uh, I, I would say that might apply to equities, not crypto, not right this second. All right. So let's take a look at NEAR. Okay. NEAR was something that we liked. It's on a four-hour chart. Unfortunately, with these altcoins, right? Like NEAR is making a new low. Right. And there's support at 846. So, you know, this is the idea about Bitcoin dominance, right? Even in the good altcoins, I think you have to be a little bit careful of. Now, Solana, you get the 13 and the nine bottom. Okay, this is the four hour chart of Solana. And then what do you get? You get two up candles and they're back selling it again. Now, if Solana goes down to 77.45, that's probably the buy point if we're just going to get this huge puke, right? All right, let's take a look at Avalanche. So Avalanche, you've got the 13 and the 9 bottom on the 4-hour chart, just like Solana. Now, with Avalanche, all right, let's take a more optimistic approach. Let's say that Avalanche holds, you know, around 70, right? So there was this old low here that seems to have my attention. Like the old, the old low. The old low in Avalanche was around 72. So I'm wondering if 72 holds, whether or not it's worth it to have Avalanche added to your portfolio as a possible play along with Luna. Now let's look at Cosmos. Okay, so Cosmos, you get the really nice looking nine bottom, right? It rips up and then it comes back. I'm actually thinking buy the dip in Cosmos. I don't necessarily have a level in mind, 
But if at the end of the day, if equities wind up down 3%, okay, and crypto doesn't move, that Luna, Near, and I'm sorry, Luna, right, Cosmos, and maybe Avalanche hold, let's look at Matic. Okay, so Matic doesn't look as good because it hasn't made the 13 bottom yet. Okay, Polkadot. Okay, Polkadot has made the 13 bottom, but it's kind of, it looks kind of like it's failing, right? In other words, every time Polkadot goes up, you know, you just see these relentless wicks. People just keep selling it. So if I was going to buy Polkadot, I would do it at 1555. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so we always have people asking for Gala. Whoops. Okay, we always have people asking for Gala. This is the four-hour chart. So there's your 13 bottom, okay? And you've got support in the neighborhood of 21 cents. So if Gala goes down to 21 cents and hold, that could actually be constructed for the whole metaverse sector, right? If you were dying to buy Gala, I don't know, maybe you take a shot here. You know, altcoins are very dicey. I would wait for Gala to make a green candle before I caught the falling knife. Okay, we frequently have guys asking for VRA. Okay, let's go to a four-hour chart there. And then we'll go to requests. Okay, so it's actually working on a 13 top <laughs> still. So that's, that's a little bit of an odd formation. So not looking good. In VRA, you know, Rune, uh, you know, the altcoin that I like to talk about from now and then, you know, obviously the lesson is don't FOMO, right? Thought it was awesome. And now it looks like it's going back to 345. All right, let's see what requests we got going on here. Okay. Okay, it looks like we got Sandbox and Flux. Polkadot, I just handled. And Blank has shown up. King wants Mana and Sand. Let's go to the Metaverse page. because I do have a Metaverse DeMarc page. See what's going on with that. Okay, so with Sandbox, you've got the 13 and the 9. You got that really nice rocket move up. You know, if, if, if ETH holds, all right, or if ETH starts rallying, then this may be a dip to buy. Okay, you can put your stop below 272. Now, in percentage terms, that's a lot. But if you want to lean on that 13 and that 9 bottom or take advantage of a puke, Right, that might be worth it. Let's take a look at Decentraland. Okay, pulling the four hour chart up here. All right, same thing 13, nine bottom, you get one rally. Okay, the I, I would guess the ultimate place to buy Decentraland is 225. So if we have to put up with that, right, you may get 272 and 225 in Decentraland. So I'm sorry, that's 272 in Sandbox. Okay, it's the four hour chart in Luna. Okay, not a lot, not a lot going on. Although this A here could indicate that, you know, this corrective phase that it went through might be over. So I am, I am definitely willing to give Luna a chance and there's an interesting trend line in Luna, okay, showing that there's support around 7878. So again, if crypto doesn't fall apart, right, and all it does is dip intraday, maybe you wait until after futures close and go with that. Okay, people ask for Theta. Theta's got a nine bottom on its four hour chart. This you got to be careful with. 13s are, 13s are stronger. 9s, they can be sketchy because if you get a rally and then that trend starts again, that's a little bit of a point of concern, right? That's why I would stick with Bitcoin, ETH, and Luna, not investment advice. All right, 
Let's see what else we have going on here. Okay, people are always asking for crypto.com. So from what this looks like, crypto.com is telling you the chart that the four hour chart, there's going to be a move, but we don't know where that move's going to be, right? My guess is it's a better buy at 36 cents, right? So let crypto.com puke out and then go for it. Now let's look at phantom. Okay. Phantom on a four hour chart is getting close to a bottom. So it's not able to get back above support at $1.38. But again, you know, you've got this nice little potential bottoming signal. So if Phantom does not make a new low, if stocks go down, it may be time to jump into Phantom. Now, the only reason to not jump into Phantom, right, is that Luna is going to eat everybody's lunch. Okay. You know, that, that is my concern because this thing with, with tether it is not funny. A blank's not coming up on this. Okay. So I will switch over to the other system. Let's go back to trading view. They're going to get blank up here. All right. So there's your blank token, right? All right. So it's now or never, right? Yeah, I, I would say that's your now or never trend line in blank, right? So right around 39 cents, right? If 39 cents holds, great. If 39 cents doesn't hold, then you're looking at probably some kind of give up trade here. But I do find that level interesting because certainly unless there's some sort of problem with this, let me label it. It's, unless there's some sort of like fundamental problem with it, that level could hold. All right, let's go back to the market. Let's see what's happening in stocks. Okay, so looking at the four hour chart of S and P, right? It it's down, but it's not accelerating. Guess that's good, right? Technology stocks like Fang. Right. This is like your Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, etc. The stuff's getting hammered kind of bad. It's almost taken out its lows. Okay. And then for laughs, let's look at ARC and then we'll go back to crypto. Okay. So interestingly enough, ARC, which is the altcoins of the stock market, they're actually not down as much as you would think. Right. So it looks like they're selling the bigger stocks today rather than the smaller ones, which could be good for crypto. You know, I know it sounds like I'm out of my mind, but I didn't want to buy it at 44. Why would I want to sell it at 37? I, I just don't. So if ARC doesn't collapse, ARC actually looks like it could go up. <laughs> How funny is that? All right. Let's see what else we got going on on the stream. Some guys going laugh out loud, Ark. Yeah, dude, I, I feel you on that. All right. Uh, CRV. Okay. API 3.
John wants to know if you think we are at the beginning of a bear market. All right, John, that's a good question. Okay. I, I think all risk assets are in a bear market, right? In other words, clearly the best use case for crypto has to do with Bitcoin and Ethereum being a medium of exchange. But all coins have been crashing for a while and there are a lot of charts like total three on TradingView, you know, that would indicate that, you know, this market is going to get hurt. The best way to be long is on trading plays with stops, right? There's some stuff that you can maybe hodl, but eventually this thing with the Russians escalates to a point where it's going to hurt all risk assets. All of them, right? Like, don't kid yourself. Like, um, I bought a book over the weekend called Putin's Playbook, written by a former defense intelligence analyst. Okay. And, you know, Mr. Putin is trying to make war, not just on Ukraine, but on basically everybody, the whole West. Now you can, you know, you can agree, disagree, but, you know, when you have a downtrend, and then this huge ongoing negative catalyst. And of course, it says nothing about inflation. Yeah, this is, this is like the middle point of a bear market where you want to try to catch what rallies you can. Okay. All right. Let's, let's, let's head over here. Let's take a look at curve. Okay, so here's the four hour chart of curve. I, I would say if curve is below $1.98, you got problems, right? Because it seems like they're selling every uptick. But if curve holds 198, it's okay. Let me see if I can get curve on this system on the DeMarc. Okay, here comes the curve four hour chart. Okay, so it's the 13 and the nine bottom. I would say, you know, this is why you use both systems, right? Trading view would tell me uh, it's bearish below $1.98. The reason I like the DeMarc charts better is because they give you support on the way down. So right now it looks like if, if curve got flushed out to $1.91, that that's actually the buy point. And if curve doesn't hold $1.91, well, you know, then it's got serious problems, right? Let's see if I can get. Okay, looking for API three. Okay. So that's the four hour chart of API three. It's got a nine bottom. I would say API three, the best buy point is 454 if they blow it out, right? Now they may not because it's got the nine bottom. So this big red candle, we don't know what that means. So this is being recorded Monday, May 7th, midday. So let, let's actually get bold and let's try a 90 minute chart in API three to try to get a handle on if there's any better, closer support points. So sometimes the faster moving the market, sometimes you have to go to a shorter time frame. So there's a 13 and a nine bottom and the best point is $5 and 37 cents in API three. That may be where you want to start grabbing it. If you're looking to do the down trade. Because personally, I think in crypto, it's like the way this is right now, everyone's selling, everyone's bearish, let them blow out equities. And then I think everyone's going to say, okay, I want crypto. And if no one wants crypto after they get done pummeling equities, then crypto's in trouble. Like no shit. Okay. V chain.
Okay, let's stay with the 90 minute chart. Why not? Okay, 0 0.0453. Okay, V chain's probably in, in the process of making yet another 13 bottom. It made one over here, it didn't do anything. That's the 90 minute chart. Let's go to the four hour to keep it consistent. Okay, not, not much happening there. Okay. I would love it if V chain was able to hold that five cent area. There's, I, I mean, I can't believe a, a supply chain solution is not useful in this market. Okay. Someone asking for flux. Let's try that. Okay. So flux has got really good support at a dollar 32. So that's pretty close. No real DeMarc bottom to speak of. Let's just take a look at the daily chart for the heck of it. Okay. That's not a particularly good scene when you see one, two, three, four, because that can lead to five, six, seven, eight, nine. But you know, a lot of times I think in these type of markets where stuff is so volatile, it's the 90 minute and the three hour chart that matters, right? A dollar 32 matters in flux. Going back to the four hour chart. Okay. Someone's asking for audius. So like somebody in there that said, we shouldn't have messed with that guy. If that guy was Putin. Okay, that that there is some truth to that, but you know what? If that book was right, he was coming after the West no matter what. I saw another book this weekend from a guy from Stanford called "The Cold War Is Not Peace." Right, and I I know that on a crypto YouTube video we want to hear we are all going to make it, and we are all going to make it because when this is all over, when you get to see how exposed the legacy world is the embarrassment of central banks. People are going to want crypto when this is over, people. Okay, right now you have the 13 bottom in Audius that gave you a, like an eight-hour rally, right? And now it's being unwound. So I, I really think in these more speculative altcoins, you know, you have to be careful. Every altcoin is not going to win. Matter of fact, you may only have two or three big ones that make it. Okay, this is interesting in Kyber, right? So it's above moving average support. Let's see if anything's happening on the daily. So interesting how Kyber bounced off this moving average, right? After it shook off the 13 top on the daily. So if this is a DeFi play somewhere in the DeFi network, somebody's noting that Axia is the only winner. Okay, Axia picked by tokenmetrics.com some time ago. I swear to God, whatever's going on with Axia, if when you look at this chart, you're like, why should I get token metrics? This is why. <laughs> Because this thing is just, this thing just won't quit, man. <laughs> it just won't quit. I mean, it's like this grinding uptrend, right? Which kind of, you know, looks like a lack of selling to me. So it doesn't look like there's any sellers here. It just kind of, kind of floats up. So, you know, 1497 is possible. Okay, let's look at Algorand. Yeah, somebody is commenting on my Illuminati necklace. It's actually not Illuminati. It's a uh, it, it's a special cr uh, crystal for like protecting protecting yourself, right? Because I have to sort of see things before they happen. So this is not just a prop for YouTube. It actually keeps me in my zen, so I can kick it for you guys. Okay, Algorand, daily chart, not looking so good. Let's look at the four-hour chart. 
All right. So it would be a really good idea if Algorand held 75 cents. Right. I think Algorand's got a lot of people selling above a dollar, but let's check bump and run possibility here. So really interesting support point in Algorand at 74 cents. You know, there was this initial rally overnight. Now stuff's coming back. I could definitely see a trading case to pick up some Algorand, not investment advice. Okay, IMX is pumping. Let's take a look at that. Wow, that certainly is pumping. There's the power of the DeMarc 9 bottom down there. Let's take a look at the daily chart. Okay, so this is why you want to pay attention to that 13 bottom when you see it. Because like I said, here's the 13 bottom in IMX, right? On March 3rd, but they puked it down three days and they hit that key support point around $1.07. And then it rocketed higher, no doubt, on a fundamental catalyst. Okay, let's go to DeFi. People are asking about Chainlink. Okay, so again, four hour chain link, right? There's your 13 and your nine bottom, right? And then there's all this relentless selling as altcoins get creamed, right? So, you know, the best place to buy chain link is 1238. If you got that, I would take the shot there. If you can't buy chain link at 1238, then it, it's, it's all over, right? Let's go to, uh, the crisis watch list. So U.S. financials, that's XLF, right? This is U.S. bank stocks, okay? I mean, if this was an altcoin, would you buy it? Probably not, right? Kind of looks like a breakdown out of a big old expanding range, okay? So... That's a nice way of telling you that the legacy financial system is effed, honestly. Okay. So let's take a look at Chainlink. Oh, we did take a look at Chainlink. Somebody was asking for Matic. We did that earlier. Not looking as good. Not looking as good as you would like. I think there is going to be a layer two season eventually, but we're not there yet. Okay, so Filecoin, you know, on a four-hour chart, you got the nine bottom, but remember with these DeMarc nines, right, for anybody who's new, okay, you get, DeMarc is a quant technical analyst. He has a system that counts conditions, like the high is higher than the high three days ago. It's complicated. And he has two areas that he works in. Like one of the conditions, he counts from one to nine. And in, in a range, that'll be a top or a bottom. In a trend, it'll be a point of pause. So you'll go one through nine, pause, and then resume. And what we don't know in Filecoin is whether that nine is a bottom, okay? Or whether we just had that kind of, hey, everything's okay, and then boom, everything isn't. That's why I want you to be careful with all coins. Like, I've said this like three streams in a row, I know, but... You know, like 1705 is the level in Filecoin where I'd be jumping in. If it doesn't have a compelling use case, okay? Um, if it doesn't have a compelling use case or you're losing money and you don't remember why you did the trade, careful. Okay, somebody said it was helpful in Seoul, okay? Right, so there was that level at $1.22, and they took out $1.22. And, you know, if they take out $1.05, it could get messy. It could get messy. Okay. 
See if I can get DAG up on the screen. By the way, folks, uh, customized TA is not available everywhere uh, on YouTube. So can we hit the like button, please, for us? Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Okay, so Constellation uh, is on support at 12 cents. So as long as it's holding 0.1219, it's okay. Okay, let's go back over here and look at Engine Coin. Okay, so Engine Coin is making a second 13 bot. So this could be constructive for Engine Coin possibly eating anything in the metaverse. So, you know, let Engine Coin let them hit it and then take a look at Engine, right? Sort of after they get done hitting equities. That's sort of my sense for today, right? That they're going to try to hit equities. And then when they're done, it could turn around and move higher, right? Okay, someone's asking for VRA. I did it before. But since I have loyal people on the stream who care, we will do it again. All right. Nico supports Bill and the, t the, tech, the token metrics team. We definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. You know, it looks like, you know, VRA is at support right now. It's showing me 0.02. Let me pull VRA up over here. Okay, so again, with stuff like this, it is really hard to find support. I, I, I don't know that it's terrible, but like if you just look at that, like say the four hour, the eight hour chart, right? Every time this thing goes up, there's somebody selling it, right? Like right here. Now, to be fair, right? I don't want to be all down in the mouth. I think if VRA holds above this 0.01, like, I don't know, 0.0187 or 0.019, it's okay. But if you start seeing it break through there, then you got serious problems. Okay. Someone's asking if I've covered Avalanche yet. I may have forgotten about it. Let's do AVAX. Okay, here comes the four hour chart of AVAX. All right, so the 13 and the nine bottom is there. I right, rallied and you've got people selling it. 70 looks like the best point for Avalanche to be long if you're going to try it. Let's take a look at the daily chart, see if there's anything there. Okay, so you have kind of a stalemate in avalanche but it would be better if it was above 76. so i'm not i'm not getting a vibe in avalanche that it necessarily wants to 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 go up all right let's take a look at the 90 minute chart a lot of noise here i don't know it looks like 72 is support so if you're gonna like be like okay i want to be long avalanche you got to take a shot at either 72 or 70 and if that doesn't work then the market is no good. It's no good. Okay. Enrique is asking, is there a world where Bitcoin drops followed by Bitcoin dominance and alts pump because of the dominance drop? Okay. I think if you're going to get alts pumping, Okay, the Russia situation actually has to be over or there's like a new world in DeFi. So this is Bitcoin dominance. I know we talked about this earlier. This is just a different view of it, right? So Bitcoin dominance has got itself above 43.
So if Bitcoin dominance holds above 43, I, I actually think it can go higher. Oops, that's not level. Okay. That's how I would do it. All right. Steve J loves the kryptonite necklace. All right. All right, folks. That is going to be it for today. I'm going to throw one more up there because somebody just snuck in GFI. Let's check GFI. Ah, Goldfinch. Launched directly to Coinbase. Okay, so the usual Coinbase trade, massive moon and then collapse. I don't know. Our fundamental guys love this project. I mean, they absolutely love it. Okay. Not investment advice. Let's see if I can do something on like a 45 minute chart on this. Okay, one second. Gonna make some fib adjustments here. Okay, so I would say the best place to get Goldfinch is $2.15 if they puke it out. That's just a guess, right? In other words, a lot of times people give up on these trades, they get all hot and that people panic and blow out of it. That's a guess as to where, you know, you might see it hold. Okay, folks, that is going to be it for today. Please hit the like button if I was helpful today, right? Please subscribe to the channel. Let everybody know that we're doing online live DeMarc work, okay? We're doing like live TA, right? With even some live trading ideas. I gave you some ideas in Bitcoin and Ethereum today along with that wave count. So really interesting to see if there is going to be a rally or whether this thing is just going to heave and go to 28. I'm betting on a rally before the decline. We'll see. All right, folks, this is Bill Noble. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.